everyone. Welcome to Lay the Loom podcast. My name is Cher. Um, this is a channel where I just talk a lot about knitting, a little spinning, a little dyeing, a little weaving. This week I'm going to do something a little bit different and do a project vlog as I knit the Sandiscarn double slippers. Uh, you might know this if you watch knitting traditions. I think they've been quite popular. Um, they almost end up looking like a little pair of pants before you felt them. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm going to try that for a quick Christmas gift. So I'll try to keep a little bit of an idea on the timing of it. Um, and if I'm successful, I'd like to do a few pair. Definitely have been on my list. And what sort of stopped me is even though um, Inga actually translated it verbally on one of her episodes, which I will try to remember to link below, um, the pattern is um, published in Norwegian. So last week as I was looking um, on YouTube for Sunday afternoon watching, um, a new podcaster uh, popped up and it's called Inga's Knitting Lab. Um, and she is a Danish podcaster and she did a really good detailed video, it's about 55 minutes on her episode 16. And it's step by step, the knitting and felting. And she actually had a couple of um, small modifications uh, that she talked about as well. Highly recommend that video. I am not gonna be that detailed in the pattern, uh, which is a free download by the way in Sandra Scarred, I'll link that below too. Um, because I really, she did a, such a phenomenal job, it would not be worth it for me <laughs> to try to recreate it. So I encourage you to go over there and take a look at, at her tips on the knitting. She talks about how she did the cast on, a um, couple of the modifications, and really importantly, she shows um, the methodology that she used for the felting process, which I think is extremely helpful because the pattern itself is extremely um, brief. Um, I have a download of it here and it's basically the cover page and <laughs> that much, half page of instructions. So um, it, I think, you know, it's not, it's, it's not a difficult knit, but I think seeing how it comes together um, is really helpful. So I'm just gonna sort of take you on step by step. Um, I'll just get started. I'll talk a little bit about the yarn, but I am using, this is my first project in my brand new project bag from um, Laura of I Heart You. Um, so this is her extra large bucket, extra large bucket bag, I think is how she calls it. And I just love this patterning. I've been watching it and finally, um, after Thanksgiving, I went ahead and dove right in. So <laughs> um, it is my favorite style of project bag. I know you've seen me talk. I've got two others. I know you've seen me talk about them before. So for the yarn I'm going to use with this, I have purchased a, quite a lot of Briggs and Little um, Heritage to do the intent of doing slippers. This is a nice um, rustic Canadian wool um, in the U.S. I get it from Maritime Family Farms. Um, in Canada, obviously you can get it from a variety of, of, of probably local retailers even. Um, it's, it's a very toothy, rustic, beautiful colors, very, lots of heathering, um, comes in a lot of different weights and it's extremely affordable. Um, the, this cake is four ounces, 113 grams, and the weight of that is 200, 215 yards. So, um, I think the pattern calls for slightly heavier yarn. I'm gonna use a size down, a size eight. You need to check that, which might be a five millimeter um, versus a nine, but I'm a kind of loose knitter. So we'll see how it, it how the fabric works up. This will be a test one for us. Um, so I have that caked up in this beautiful cake and we will get started. So I will pop in periodically and show you some of the different stuff. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Um, hopefully you can hear me. I'm trying to whisper the house is still quiet, just having a, a cup of tea. Um, so I stayed up last night and um, I had cast on for the Turkish cast on and knit up that worked brilliantly. That is not in the pattern. That is one of the modifications that Inga made. And what happens is this becomes the back of your heel. Um, you know, the sensible kind of 
pair of little pants <laughs> before you felt it. Um, this, this comes back at heel and the pattern just has you cast on and work in the round and then you would seam this. So I think that having a um, double cast on is a brilliant idea so you don't have to do that. Um, however, <laughs> I went ahead and I split for the um, feet and um, as I got looking at it at about 11.15 last night, I realized my, what I was using as beginning of the round to count was for my magic loop, which was not, so you'll notice my little feet are twisted 90 degrees. So I'm gonna, the, and I used actually a provisional cast on um, here, which I think is a little bit different the pattern. That is something Inga called out. I'm back and I have um, fixed <laughs> the split. So luckily it was really easy to rip out. I had half of the stitches on a stitch holder and this is extremely sticky wool. So it was just a matter of ripping it out and picking up the stitches. So now you'll see more appropriately, here is my cast on edge. And here is the first foot, or <laughs> I think it looks like little pants, <laughs> legs. Um, and then I have um, done a provisional cast on. Um, provisional cast on uh, there and I've got a photo of that so I'll show you that um, that's has seemed to work really well so um, I'm going to keep on getting the so the next step of that is to knit the foot close the toe come back pick up this side and do the same and then I'll have one done I did forget to turn on the timer, which was one of the things I wanted to do as I was knitting. And I've been up and down a lot this morning, so I will time on the second um, foot to get a better accurate um, um, idea of timing. I also say I'm doing the size 33-34, which uh, for a US size 5 ladies. So I am doing a smaller size, but I have to knit. I've got some that I've got to do for size 14 men's too. So I'll get a good, um, hopefully get a good range as we go through. I will say so far, this is a super easy and relaxing knit. I will say my gauge is off. Um, I used eight needles because I usually am a really loose knitter and the pattern calls for nine. Um, I think US, I think I'm using US Five and the pattern calls for 5.5 five, five millimeter. I'll double check that and put it below. Um, and um, these are, um, my gauge is, is short. I'm getting, I was getting like 18 instead of 15 for 10 centimeters, four inches. Um, which I'm actually, because I have to felt them, I'm not super worried about. It'll be kind of dense. They probably just won't shrink in and be as felty looking they may have some stitch definition but they're double layer um, I'll just have to be careful when I felt it that I don't over felt it um, but based on Inga's um, really good um, video on the felting it took her three cycles so I'll just have to be really careful with my one and two and, and kind of see where that goes so I think it's going to be fine um, I will go up to a nine or might even go up to a 10. I did not gauge swatch, no. I figured this was a gauge swatch, but it was it was close. It was 16 when I did it at the bottom, but I think as I get tighter in these, um, it'll be interesting, I'll, I will take good measurements um, before I um, wash them. Um, that, I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot in there, so, um, I think just with the felting process, you don't have to be super exact, but you do want to be able to predict the size um, of it. So some of it will depend on how much the yarn shrinks and such as well. So anyway, more to come. Um, and I, my size needle was, my size nine needles were, were in a sweater. So yeah, I guess I need to get another set of size nine needles. Is it, do you notice that? I have some that I have like four sets of, but like that's never the one that I need. I always need the one that I like have to buy another one of to like, I don't know, must just be a 
Let's just be the way of the knitter. <laughs> All right, so back to this and I'll let you know how it goes. Thanks. Um, and now I've finished the one uh, foot and toe decrease. So I will do the same thing on the other side. Um, I will say um, I had a hard time following uh, Inga's explanation of how she did the um, double cast on here. Uh, she did it with two needles and I was using a um, stitch saver which was super neat on the first side I did but when I picked up on this side I had two gigantic holes and even picking up like a sweater I had to go back in with some yarn and uh, do some um, kind of knitting surgery repair which I mean I guess on a felted item is not a big deal I would um, definitely not like it if it was not felted so um, when I do the second slipper, I'm going to take another look at that section of her video um, and see if I can do a better job. It, it was just, I mean, it's not a big deal to stitch it up, but it's kind of a little bit annoying. And um, I don't know if I just did my provisional cast on maybe too loosely. I mean, you don't have a way to tighten it up on the second side, so I'm thinking that may have something to do with it. So I'm gonna play around with that a little bit on the on the second um, slipper, and I uh, will let you know how that goes. So, so far so good. Hello everyone, I am back. <laughs> uh, so if you've been following along uh, with this little vlog, um, I have now knit two slippers. I have not felt to them yet. I've decided to wait and let the recipient um, who will be here for the holiday. Um, I'm going to felt them and let them put them on their feet so that we get a really custom fit. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is the first slipper. It's been laying flat in the knitting bag with yarn on top of it for a while. So it's stretched. I mean, it's flattened out quite a bit, but I think had that been the same while well, this one looks a little shorter, I think when it rest it probably will be similar too so really um really interesting i learned a few things as i went along so before you fold them in inside out they look like this and you are basically just popping the heel in to the other heel so that kind of that place in the middle becomes the top of the shoe. So now, um, as a reminder on this one, um, I was, uh, I knit with a much smaller needle um, than is recommended. So my gauge is quite a bit tighter. Um, I'm knitting for a really small shoe size. So size ladies, um, US women's five. So that's quite small. So even this one actually fits me a little bit loose. I'm a size eight, eight or eight and a half US um, unshrunk. So I'm confident it will fit the recipient fine. Um, but that's how they go together. Um, I thought Inga's Knitting Lab um, tutorial was excellent. The only issue I had with any of this, that it's really easy knitting, I think one more pair, I probably can memorize the pattern other than just checking that initial cast on number of st you know, stitches. Um, but Inga has some really good tips with the Turkish cast on. I think that makes it so much easier to not have that seaming at the end. Um, I'm gonna use her tutorial on the felting um, and, and there's some comments in that video too with some additional tips. I think that'll be good. So I'll let you know how they um, felt up um, also. Um, I used, um, so I, I used a US eight or five millimeter needle, which it calls for a 10. I normally, this is really interesting. I am normally a really loose knitter and I almost always have to go down one or two needle sizes. Um, I'm wondering, and this one I thought my, particularly the first one when I was doing on Magic Loop, I think I knit tighter on Magic Loop, um, even than I did on the, I, I switched to circulars on the second slipper for the foot part, which it was a uh, small, you know, eight inch circulars, which was really nice. Um, I, I preferred that as long as I kept it loose. Um, and, 
and then I switch back to the magic loop for the just the very end of the toe um, and I did the, the front half of it magic loop um, so Turkish cast on was super helpful um, for this this one with the US 8 I, I did follow the size 30 334 slipper, so I was casting on um, 72 stitches or 36 wraps if you're doing a Turkish cast on. Um, she's got a really good description there. Um, the, the hardest part for me was you pick up stitches. So you might remember where I was having my issue. So you start at the back. You cast on and you knit this direction to here and then you are putting half of the stitches on hold so kind of imagine this and then doing one foot and then picking up so you're casting on some stitches in here to be the bridge that actually becomes the um, in step of we are at the end of the uh, video for the double slippers by Sam Descarn. Um I um, gifted them so I actually don't have the finished felted object but I will have some photos here um, and uh, for some stats I used uh, 68 grams in slipper one and 63 grams in slipper two which is a little interesting because slipper two um, actually turned out a little bit bigger. I think you can see that in both the um, pre-felting and post-felting um, pictures. Um, so my gauge was a bit tighter than the uh, called, quite a bit tighter than the called for pattern. I used a US size eight um, needle instead of a US 10. Let's see, an eight is um, five millimeters. I think a 10 is six millimeters. Um, I'll double check that. And so felting it, um, it was interesting. I have a front load uh, wa washing machine. Um, I did on a hot cycle, um, two short hot, hot cycles. The first time it didn't hardly shrink at all. Second time it shrunk a little bit. Um, I did measure. Um, and then I actually ended up putting it on the, um, Ours is called Sanitary Steam. I think it's for like towels and such. Um, and that did a pretty good job felting it. You could still see, as you can see in the finished object photos, um, some of the stitch definition um, in this pair. Definitely on the next pair, I will use the size 10 needles. Um, I think my, it was interesting. I typically am quite a bit looser knitter. Um, I think between the stickiness of the yarn and maybe doing the magic loop made my knitting um, a little bit tighter, which is, I think, kind of interesting. Something to remember um, if I'm struggling with, um, with gauge or maybe I'm just getting to be a little more even in my knitting. I, who knows, right? Um, and I did on the second slipper, I used um, uh, nine-inch or eight inch circulars, uh, uh, Chagu shorty interchangeables um, to do the small, the foot. So that possibly could have affected it um, as well. I mean, that may have been a little bit looser. I don't tend to knit overly tight on small circulars, so that could be part of it, the difference as well. But definitely worth doing. It was a pretty quick pattern. I never did really have an opportunity to um, record the time I actually spent knitting. I just, it was kind of a lot of up and down with the holidays and, you know, a few minutes here, a few minutes there. Um, I, my guess is with relatively steady knitting, but certainly not all day, you could probably do it in three days, four days at the most. Um, it's a pretty quick, um, relaxing knit and actually other than getting your initial cast on and then a couple of numbers later you don't really need to be looking at the pattern either so that makes it quite an easy on the go project you can just sort of jot down those couple numbers on a you know on a card or something or um, if you keep a knit companion on your phone or something you could just look at that so i would definitely knit it again i definitely recommend looking at ingo's knitting lab 
um, videos. I found those extremely helpful. Um, I found her tips very helpful. Um, so certainly um, recommend that. Um, and I'd love to hear what you're knitting. If you are, um, if you've tried any slippers, what your favorite slipper pattern is. So that'd be a great thread for uh, the comment below. Let me know what your favorite slipper pattern is. And uh, happy knitting, spinning, dyeing, and weaving. Bye, everybody.